Cancer has been with humans throughout our recorded history. This long history of cancer in humans has led to many methods of treatments. However, its etiology is still not perfectly understood. A lack of technology shaped our vision of the disease as a homogeneous entity, and we have treated it as such. New advances in technology, such as bioassays and other genotyping strategies, have allowed us to determine the genotypes of cancerous cells. This has shown us that cancer is in fact a heterogeneous community, leading us to a new treatment philosophy. Cancer is a devastating disease. More than 580,000 people are expected to die this year in the U.S. alone, almost 1,600 people a day. Cancer treatments in the U.S. are estimated to cost $77.4 billion. Furthermore, the National Cancer Institute alone spends $5.9 billion a year on cancer research. So with all of these efforts, why do we still not have a cure? That it's really bad and pervasive and something that we do not know how to cure, pretty much. Mutations! It's a disease. <laughs> I know that cancer is due to an overgrowth of cells. I know that it's terrible and it hurts a lot of people, but a lot of people also have been strong survivors from it too. Cancer is a disease which occurs on an individual level. It is rarely transmissible to others, but can spread all over the body. Cancer is caused by spontaneous mutations in the genes of a cell, which causes it to divide rapidly and without constraint. Because every cancer case is different, there is no definitive cure for cancer of any type. There are some strategies that we use to fight cancer. One is to attempt detection as early as possible, before it has sufficient time to spread. Unfortunately, early detection is not feasible in many cases. Another strategy is to treat cancer aggressively. However, this can be very harmful to the person's whole body, since treatments like chemotherapy and radiation affect all the cells in the body, not only the cancerous ones. Third is to attempt a combination of treatments, which will hopefully wipe out all the cancer cells, since it is likely that not every cancer cell is resistant to every treatment. However, this can be very damaging to a person's health and increases the risk that a patient will have to have an adverse reaction to one treatment. But can cancer evolve? What do we know about evolution? You know, there's the Darwinism theory. Like Darwin? There were monkeys. I would think that if, according to like that whole Darwin thing, that if people are supposed to lose the things that they don't need, like tails or whatever, th as we evolve, then technically, why is cancer still here? Why hasn't that gone away? It could evolve to be not affected by medicines we currently use. Evolution works through five mechanisms. Variation, inheritance, selection, time, and adaptation. I don't know for sure. There is the capacity for cancers to mutate. I don't know if I would call it necessarily evolution as such. Yes, I mean, it has like its own genetic material. And so I'd imagine that it could undergo some sort of similar process. So like the whole problem of cancer and, and why we can't solve it, like and treat it, is because it's all it's rapidly evolving like with our bodies. There is no doubt in my mind that cancer fits into an evolutionary model in uh, in several different ways. There is a small population of tumor cells that in some cases survives the even the most harsh treatments and they live to divide again another day. As cancer cells divide over time, they acquire new mutations. This leads to genetic variation in the cancer population. These new mutations are replicated and spread. This is a form of inheritance. Selective pressures in the body, as well as from cancer therapy, cause some cancer cells to survive where others do not. So how do we use this knowledge to help treat cancer? When a treatment such as chemotherapy is administered to a patient, some cancer cells may survive. These cells are said to be resistant to that kind of therapy. These cancer cells will grow and grow and will not be killed by the old therapy. They have evolved. A relatively new and promising technique is targeted therapies. These treatments hone in on the cancerous cells, leaving the healthy cells as intact as possible. 
As we already know, cancerous cells need far more nutrients and oxygen than normal cells. In order to compensate for this increased demand, the body grows new blood vessels to help deliver more resources to the growing tumor. One targeted treatment works by killing off new growing blood vessels so that no more excess oxygen and nutrients are delivered to the tumor. The tumor will stop dividing and eventually die. This treatment kills all cancer cells regardless of adaptive mutations, therefore bypassing diversity of cancer populations. I think it sounds like a good idea. I think that it depends on the type of cancer. If they work, that would be fantastic because um, the non-target specific treatments uh, are incredibly tough on the whole body. Targeted cancer treatments are very exciting frontier. Um, I have to say they've been a very exciting frontier for, for many, many years. Um, I heard about the attempt to, to, to create tar targeted treatments uh, in the 80s and, and uh, early 90s, and uh, people have had the idea for a long time, people have been doing research on it for a long time. It's, the idea in, involves getting, getting a, um, a drug to be bound particularly to tumor tissue and, and not affect the normal parts of the body. Uh, sometimes it, 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 some research involves uh, actually targeting the genetic, the particular genetic signature of the particular tumor in question. Targeted therapies have been on the horizon since the 1980s, so why haven't they become more prevalent? For one, the initial cost of genotyping cancer cells and other treatments have been historically inhibitory. With the advent of new genotyping strategies, however, target treatment is becoming more feasible for some. Furthermore, knowing the type of cancer that a person has and the specific mutation does not necessarily mean that there is a very effective treatment. Essentially, more research is needed. However, the funding is not usually given to researchers by the big pharmaceutical companies who do not always have the financial incentive to sponsor this research. Also, the more we learn about our genome and our body's capacity for medication, it seems as though the research needed for this is exponential. Cancer is a complex and ever-changing disease. Every case of cancer is unique and involves in changes even inside a single individual. The future of cancer treatment has been proposed to lie in genotyping and targeted treatments, which would allow us to, to kill cancer cells more selectively. We still have a ways to go. However, as we move into the future, our understanding of this disease will grow and we will continue to innovate ways to help the millions of people affected by cancer.